So the painting we're going to be looking at this week is St. John the Baptist by Leonardo da Vinci. This is an oil painting. Uh, it's on walnut wood. Da Vinci painted this between 1513 and 1516. And this was the time when the High Renaissance was really transitioning into uh, the art movement that followed Renaissance artwork, which was called Mannerism. And then Mannerism was followed by the Baroque movement, and then Rococo, and, and on and on through art history. And nowadays, this painting is uh, exhibited in the Musée de Louvre in Paris, France. So looking at the piece, it depicts St. John the Baptist. He's, he's in isolation. He's wearing a, a fur pelt of some type, and he's holding a reed cross in his left hand. And I think it's worth noting that the reed cross and, and the pelt were actually added later by a different artist. And the way that art historians were able to discern that was using a technique known as uh, monochromatic sodium lighting, which is um, similar to radiometric dating for dating fossils. It enables art historians to, to figure out which parts of the painting were, were painted when. So looking now more specifically at, at John the Baptist himself, if you look at his facial structure, his eyes, the size of his eyes, his, his cheekbones, and even kind of the, the contour and the structure of his arms, there's a very effeminate nature about him. And da Vinci did that a lot in his paintings. Um, was to attribute kind of an eff a feminine nature to to male figures. And he's also got this sort of mysterious, enigmatic smile, which, of course, we also see in the Mona Lisa. And that was another thing that da Vinci loved to do in his paintings, and is, in many ways, why these paintings are so interesting to analyze and why there's so much depth and complexity to them. The most prominent attribute, I think, of this painting is how... John the Baptist's right hand is, is pointed upwards, and of course everyone always wants to know what he's pointing at, and he's pointing toward heaven. And being who he is, John the Baptist, who's kind of a, a, the symbol for baptism and the salvation that that represents, it would make sense that he would be kind of directing the viewer toward heaven and toward the salvation that, that came from the act of baptism. But the interesting thing is that later artists actually employed that same gesture in their paintings to convey a sort of religious motif. So that gesture became associated with religious, uh, re with, with religious paintings. So you'll look at later paintings and you'll see uh, the central figures making the same gesture which endows these paintings with re a religious connotation. And in the Bible, St. John the Baptist was referred to as, as he who came to the light. And light, and the distribution of light in this painting, is so, is so important. And it endows John the Baptist with a sort of, kind of sculptural volume. And this transition between him and his background and how they blend together is really important. And this is a great demonstration of what's called sfumato, which was one of the four canonical painting modes of the Renaissance. Uh, the other three were Congianti, Chiaroscuro, and Uniana. And Sufmato, specifically, is kind of defined by this blurring in contours of, of light. So this sort of um, suffuse nature of the light. But at the same time, as he kind of blends into his background, there's this definite definition between, between him and this kind of murky, dark background that gives him kind of a sculpture-like quality, and it almost makes it look like he's turning out of the painting. And we'll, we see this more in Baroque artwork, where it kind of looks like the figures are jumping out at you. But, and it's, it's, much more, it's much more subtle here, but we can still see kind of the hint of that, of the almost sculpture-like nature of the painting. And the other thing that I think is important to talk about here is color, or rather the lack thereof. Color is used very scarcely in this painting. And uh, personally, I think that that actually adds something to this work because you avoid these kind of um, artificial hues that, that take away from the light itself, because the light is really what's important in this painting. And just kind of as a closing note uh, about light, Plato, St. Augustine, all of these figures throughout the ages have talked about light as being in the service of beauty and good. We think of light as being associated with salvation, with goodness. Darkness is associated with evil. And I think what da Vinci was really trying to do here was kind of to translate that notion of light, goodness, and salvation into his painting 
And that's, that's why lighting is really so important here.